Hello, and welcome to another video from your friends here at Hill Engineering. I'm Camille, and today I am virtually sitting down with one of my colleagues, Hanan Ribeiro, to discuss our machining simulation capabilities. Can you give us an introduction to our topic today? Yes, sure thing. Part distortion after machining is a big problem in many industries and typically arises due to the release and redistribution of residual stress as a part is machined from the stock material. What does this distortion mean for manufacturers? A study conducted by Boeing based on four aircraft programs found that costs related to part distortion exceeded $290 million, and Boeing is not alone. That's a substantial cost. Exactly, which is why our machining process simulation services can have a huge impact. Let's dive in deeper. Ignoring part distortion during machining processes can mean non-conformance parts, necessary reworking, having to scrap parts, all of which lead to delays and overall economic loss. Hill Engineering's machining process simulation services can help reduce uncertainty in machining planning and improve machining processes. There are a number of ways that our technology can help, including quickly providing upfront assessments of the risk of distortion, optimizing an existing machining process to reduce distortion and improve outcomes, also reducing the number of setups and steps for current machining processes, and quantifying residual stress in incoming material stock as well. One of the first ways that we can help is by providing upfront assessments of the risk of distortion for potential new products. This identifies parts that will be difficult to machine. It's a major help for, say, a contract machining vendor. The example shows an aerospace machine part that distorted after being unclamped from the table. You can see there's quite a bit of curve there in the machine part, which wasn't the desired result. The simulation determined about 18 inches of out-of-plane displacement near the mid-length of this 30-foot long part. Wow, that could cause some issues. How would you go about addressing a problem like this? We start with estimates for the residual stress in the raw material, which we might get from our library of existing measurement data, other process simulations, or residual stress measurements specific to the application. Once we have that, we evaluate the machining plan that the customer has in mind and provide distortion estimates. So you were able to recreate this result using your simulation. That's correct. Another possibility is to optimize existing machining processes to reduce distortion. In this example of a typical large aluminum machining operation, part placement in the stock material affected distortion by 87%. Why is placement such a large factor? Well, for plate material, residual stress fields are generally symmetric, whereas they're a lot more complex in forgings and extrusions. So for the example on this slide, placing the part at the center of the stock material rather than near the top where it originally was leads to far less distortion. You've mentioned improving efficiency too. Would you mind going into that a bit more? Of course. Actually, that's the focus of my next slide. One of the other benefits of our simulation services is that we take the time to look at the machining process as a whole and determine if there are ways to reduce the number of setups and steps. For example, in this slide, we can see the machining sequence used to manufacture an aircraft empennage fitting out of a closed die forging. Initially, this sequence used seven different operations. With machining modeling, that number was reduced to five operations while keeping the finished part within the specified distortion tolerance. Following that, this next slide touches up on how our lab experience informs our machining modeling. You have a hand in that, don't you Camille? I do. I've been a part of hundreds of residual stress measurements as part of the lab team, and I also manage the ISO certifications for our commercial testing laboratory. Great, so you're already well aware how quick our measurement turnaround can be. We're then able to apply that knowledge to model residual stress in the incoming material due to quenching, cold work stress relief, or other similar processes. Do these models apply to multiple materials? Yes, several, including aluminum and nickel superalloy materials, all built from test data. The slide here shows an example comparing residual stress in an aluminum forging from measurements and process models in both S-quenched and cold-worked states. 
Finally, here's an example where machining process evaluation and optimization is shown. We consider a representative aircraft part and use multi-step models to simulate two different machining strategies, including variations in part placement within the stock material and the sequence of machining operations. The results identify a machining strategy that takes advantage of part placement within the stock material to reduce distortion by 57%, while also reducing the number of material flips in the machining process from 3 to 2. That would certainly save on time. Yes, so to summarize, Hill Engineering's machining process simulation services can help reduce uncertainty in machining planning and improve machining processes. Results are provided through validated models to support decisions. Our simulation technology provides quick, upfront assessments of distortion risks and optimizes the machining process. Thank you so much for that presentation, Hainan. I'm sure you've given our viewers some important information to consider. Certainly, anytime. If any of you watching have questions or would like more information about our residual stress measurement and machining process simulation capabilities, please click on the link below to contact us. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more vlogs here from your friends at Hill Engineering. I'm Camille, and until next time, make it happen. Thank you.